Hey guys, so today we get to talk about the collector's booster box for Core 2021. Now, I've said many times that when something is, you know, for something to be collectible, it does have to be rare somewhat. It can't be just overdone. You know, I collect uh, many things, Funkos, anim sideshows, which are really, I'm starting collecting them right now. It's like 400 500 600 dollars a piece which is crazy i collect anime figures i collect you know even in mobile games i collect digital waifus if you will but when you talk about this um this is like a a new level because if every set has a collector's edition including the vip double masters edition then you do really have to ask yourself like what is collectible if everything is special and foil, then nothing is really... And I can explain this very easily. If you look at the look at the foil price and then look, you look at the regular price, pretty crazy. Absolutely crazy what is going on that there's not that much of a difference when previously there was a large, large difference in the foil, especially for a card playable in ED8s. Um, and you can look at the older foils. Uh, any foils, like the foil Grim Monlith has a 5X, 8X multiplier on the regular Grim Monlith. And any of the Urza's uh, Radiant uh, is a good example. It's a $90 foil, Radiant Archangel from Urza's Legacy. The regular card is $2. So, yeah. Now the foil is almost the same price as the non-foil. And perhaps in, my, in a very weird case scenario, if the card quality still is really bad on foils, one day the non-foil could be more expensive than the foil, which is uh, absurd. But back to um, the reason I do not like the collector's booster box for any price. Uh, any price, I think it's too much. Um, comes down to the fact that these are standard cards. So if you were going to pimp out some cards, it wouldn't be these. The majority of standard cards are not playable. And even the ones that are playable in internal, they tend to make them overly strong. Oko, for instance, Once Upon a Time. Uh, those two cards in the foil box topper version were extremely expensive. Oko... Non-foil Oko was a $60 card at one time, gets banned, becomes a sub-$10 card. Once Upon a Time was almost $20, gets banned, becomes a $2 card. So even if the cards in it are really, really good, it doesn't save you. It's not even close to uh, saving you. So I think it's probably one of these really kind of weird scenarios um where i don't know like i don't know why we need th this product like and i don't like the concept oh it's not for you you don't need to buy it because it does affect you so even if you don't buy the double or <laughs> double masters vip it's so crazy to think that's happening uh, that a master set is getting a collector's edition version of it. <laughs> it's just already crazy. That's just crazy. But uh, Core Set 2021 is like the most base of all cards, right? You could not have a more base standard set than the Core Set. Uh, very few of these cards will probably be playable in Eternal formats as is Core Set. Maybe there'll be some reprints that would be interesting. It's not that I don't feel like this has a place. This does have a place, but not at two times, three times the price of a regular box. I think the place of these special cards are in regular boxes. And I know you can pull some of them, but I think if you just buy standard boxes, your expected value is absolutely gone. And you can look at Throne of the Eldraine. You can look at Ikoria. Standard boxes are $40 right now, TCG player lows. And even if you sold for TCG player lows, which is hard to do, by the way, because every it's a race to the bottom, you pay TCG player, what, 20%? If you do TCG direct, maybe it's more. 
you're not getting very, you pay $100 a box and the expected value when you open your box is never $100. It's always going to be, because it's so low to begin with, there's not many things you can open. You would have to open fire for like half the packs to break even. And that's crazy. So for people who like drafting, you're, expected value for a draft set has been incredibly diminished for people who just like opening packs it's almost not worth doing anymore now uh, that gets me on to uh, why i th i feel and i really do strongly feel that they should get rid of the collector's booster box in the future it's almost like the they tried it with the inventions and convocations and the mythic of mythics right God. Uh, that was even better than what this this is really bad this is bad for many reasons but the primary reason this is so bad is when you have a set like a core set it's supposed to be an introduction product right it's supposed to introduce new magic players who maybe they don't really play magic maybe they heard about magic maybe um it's supposed to introduce new magic players to the game. And now you're introducing them to a 200 and plus dollar box. That is not very new magic player friendly. And that's the that's the key here is when you have a product and the product is so expensive that a new magic player probably wouldn't buy it i mean if i were to be honest with you why would anyone buy this if you're a brand new magic player and you saw a box for 90 and then you saw this for 240 you would just buy the 90 dollar box and then you realize oh my goodness like there's nothing <laughs> there's no value in the 90 dollar box i just lost 60 dollars or something like crazy oh so here's this you know 240 dollar box that I can buy and it'll have all the good cards that I want in it and foil. I hope they stopped. I, I really, really hope they stop this. Um, overall, it's just a bad look for Magic. Um, it's core set is supposed to be an introduction set. I know that they have something called Jumpstart. Yes, I, I'm aware that. But core set has always been the set to introduce new Magic players to the game. Why would you introduce them to a collector's edition? That was that's the first thing that went through your mind. Oh, we can get money from these. No, they're not going to commit. The collector's edition is for people who are very invested in the game already. For people to spend three times as much for a collector's booster box, which has one third. It's not even the same amount of packs. You're getting 12 packs instead of 36. Like it's insane right you're paying four times the amount for one third less 66 <laughs> percent less packs um but you know what they cram you know I, I gotta say they cram a lot of value in the packs and the more value they put on these packs i thought triomes would be very valuable in icor so i you know i'm if you it's eight minutes in if you lasted this long you probably enjoy my channel somewhat I made a mistake on triomes because I did not factor how many triomes would be in every collector's booster box. Triomes were pre-selling for $20 a piece. I thought they would at least be $10 like some type of Shockland type of deal. But I had no idea that every single collector's booster box would have like 50 triomes in them. It, it just blows my mind to think about, you know, I'm watching... Uh, various youtubers including alpha investments open boxes for their subscribers and it's literally it's stack the triumph stack is bigger than the mythic stack and the mythic stack is already huge for this type so i something that i in my opinion should have been valuable should have been more rare uh should at least be shock land price is almost uh useless right because, again, they're not going to... I, I knew this going in. I don't think they're going to be four elves. Um, I don't think they're going to be four elves in modern or even four elves in standard until, some until the shocks rotate out. 
but I thought that EDH players would all run for it because it's a auto include in these uh, EDH decks that have the triple land. If you have four land and you want all of them, you, or you have five land, you want all five of them. Because they're good cards. They're not bad cards. It's just that there's way too many of them. And any of these collectors boosters, it's crazy just the amount of things that you have on them. And it does affect. So the collectors booster pa packs do affect a regular booster pack. It decimates the value. Like opening a triome should break even on a regular booster pack at least, and you should actually double the money from the pack, but it doesn't do that because you have collector's packs where like every other card is a triome. So, I mean, that's how crazy it is. Bye, guys.